If you had to guess what animal scientists use to test treatments for our humans, you probably would say a lab rat or a chimp, but not a zebrafish. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is D News. I'm Trace, and this is a human. And this is a Danny O'Rario, commonly known as the zebrafish. See the resemblance? Might not be obvious at first, but let me show them again. Human, zebrafish. <laughs> okay, now you get it. Scientists sometimes need to use animals to learn about biology. I did a video about this recently, and you can see it here. Zebrafish are used as a human analog, but why fish? We don't look like fish, unless of course you're Abe Sapien, but he's not real. <laughs> Or is he? Our story begins back in the 1970s at the University of Oregon. A researcher determined the zebrafish would be a great analog to study the genetics of cell growth because their translucent eggs develop outside the mother and in only like two to four days. And although the product is very different between these little fish and a baby human, the developmental process is surprisingly similar. Using these fish, scientists can study how birth defects happen in all vertebrates. Scientists also use rats, mice, and various insects, but because of the large number of eggs these little gals put out, as well as their crazy fast development mental rate, these are more ideal. Plus, they're like 90% cheaper to maintain. The zebrafish has another thing going for it, a sequenced genome. That means scientists have every genetic pair of a zebrafish on record, not just parts of it, the whole thing. How big is a zebrafish genome? They're not that complex. So like 1.7 billion letters. That's a lot of genes. Because they've sequenced the genome, scientists can study genetic disorders, cancers, and other DNA-related problems too. And they've also sequenced the full genomes of a rat, a giant panda, a platypus. I bet that was some interesting genetic reading. So anyway, we've got the why, but what have they done for us lately? The Danio rario has been slightly mutated to more closely resemble humans biologically, so they can be used to study cardiovascular diseases. Their embryos are studied to learn about birth defects, and they've been used to learn about stem cells, skin cancers, blood diseases, and my favorite, the inner workings of the brain. There's still a lot to learn about brains. Other than that zombies think they're delicious, we don't seem to have a good grasp on them. So scientists are putting these zebrafish into virtual reality pools and then paralyzing them to connect their brain to a computer. They think that they're swimming, and since they're translucent, scientists literally watch their neurons fire. Look, no animal is a perfect analog to humans, but the zebrafish are pretty damn good. Back in 1988, there were a couple of dozen studies involving zebrafish, and last year there were over 2,000. This little guy is making a big splash. Using animals for scientific research touched quite the nerve last time we did it. But is there an alternative? What other thing could we use? Cast your ballot by leaving a comment on this video and thanks for checking out DNews today. Come back for two more videos tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. <laughs>